How am I looking? Any good? Yeah, I'll do. Tie your truth, close the door. I've kept the window up, I've kept the French door open to get some air in, in here. It's getting very hot. So, this is why I have opened the door. Now, excuse me. Uh, table needs drying, I do beg your pardon. Didn't realise the tables were wet. I need to adjust my computer and adjust the screen and adjust the screen. Right, I'll do it. Okay. Now, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Right, my name is the lay preacher James Davis, another Sunday, another sermon. Um, in this video, we are going to be talking about the Eucharist, also known as Holy Communion, and why it is so important. So, because I am going to be taking the Eucharist, the uh, Eucharist in this video. Th this is why I am dressed up, though I have dressed like this before ages and ages ago in my previous sermons. Uh, so I think I'll wear this again in previous sermons because it's part of my uniform, even though that's not important, but that's why I feel uh, comfortable in. And I will have to now do videos from this angle instead of that angle over there. Okay, right. I've got my grail, which I which I made in pottery class in two thousand and two in T in Schoenebrunn College in in Swansea. No, it must be earlier than that. 2001. God, I was 18 then. I'm 40 and now I don't believe it. Right. And because of the Eucharist, I've got my wine. And it's red. Of course, it's red. It has to be red because it, it um, resembles the blood of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And I have my bread. Unfortunately, I haven't even got the proper wafers. So, just a, a small piece of white bread will have to do. I don't like whole meal. Even though it's healthier, I prefer white bread. So, then goes the wine. A bit more than that. And then to water it down, I will use, well, water. In this um, pottery jug, which I also made in college in 2001. Okay, now, what is the purpose of Holy Communion? It is to represent what it is to rep it is to represent the eve of Jesus' crucifixion when he sat at the Lord's table with his disciples and with the breaking of bread and the wine he said Eat this in, he said, eat this in remembrance of me and drink this blood for it is the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, the, the uh, last suppers are mentioned and talked about in the four gospels. 
But in this video, we are going to be talking about what St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians when he was writing to the church in, in Corinth in about 60 AD. Before I start, I made this. It's a placard that I paid, so that will be going up there sometime today or whenever I've got time. This is a drawing that I drew of our Lord and Saviour's crucifixion. And before I start the sermon, before I start reading, I just want to show you some, some Christian books that can help people who are either new to the Christian faith or non-believers but are interested in Christianity. So I got the Bible diction I got the Bible dictionary here. I've got this uh, pamphlet. It's called Try Praying. A little book a little book making a big a difference inside and as Christians we should pray in fact in in oh, where is it I think it's in 2 Corinthians if my memory says me correctly but in 2 Corinthians I think in 5.17 it says to pray without ceasing I got to see that now sorry it's it's uh, it might be Philippians. No, I think it's for Philippians. Oh, turn a page a day like. Uh, no, it's not. So it's got to, Anyway, it's, that's not important, right? What is important is the scripture I'm going to be reading here. That is a very, um, well, I haven't read this a book yet, but I picked this up in, in the charity shop. It's called God on the Move, Grow and Change in a Church Worldwide. I've got, I picked up this one as well for people who are grieving. So it's called a Living Through, Through Grief. Strength and hope in time of loss. So if you've lost a spouse or a sibling or a parent, this is a good um, book to read. I got this one, which I read daily. The Exposter's Word for Every Day. And it's by Jimmy Swaggart. This is a good uh, a book too. Um, one, th one thousand prayers for difficult times. Inspiration for when you don't know what to pray. And last but not least, I got this a big thing, which is very similar to the Bible dictionary, but it goes more in depth. It's more specific. It's more. Spe more specific when it comes to reading words and that is called where to find it in the bible okay right now that i've done all that shall we continue with this sermon if you have your bibles with you today i got this huge thing look at this it's a tome right we're going to be reading from 1 corinthians from verse 20 to verse 34. So that is 1 Corinthians, also called 1 Corinthians, chapter 20, from verse 34. And here, Saul of Tarsus, who becomes St. Paul, writes to the church in Corinth about what the purpose of the Eucharist is, also known as Holy Communion. Right. When you come together, therefore, unto one place, this is not, sorry, wait a moment, yeah. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. 
For in eating, everyone takes before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What, have ye not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise you the church of God, and shame them and shame them who have a thought? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you n- n- not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, so yeah, that the Lord Jesus, the same n- night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do you show the Lord's death till he come. Sorry, I'll read that again. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy or unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause... Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are just just ended in the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any and if any m- man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Now, if you did n- not understand any of that, or just some of that, Luckily, I can examine this for you because, sorry, I can analyse this for you because this is actually a study a Bible, also by Jimmy Swaggart, and he go and he explains verse by verse. So, this is what he says. Now, I understood some of it in my own words but I will read from what Jimmy Swaggart has to say. Jimmy Swaggart, you are my brother in Christ. I love you as Christ loved you. And if I do not get to see you in this lifetime, I shall do so in our Father's kingdom. Right, so, verse 20. When you come together, therefore, unto one place, which is... Referring to the assembly of believers, so hence the Corinth church. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. This has reference to the fact that they may have called it such, but the way it was being done was not recognised as such by the Holy Spirit. Right. Verse 21. For in eating every, for in eating, everyone takes before other his own supper. Some brought lavish meals, and one is hungry, where some were slaves and had nothing to bring, and another is drunken, which of course means 
intoxication, drunkenness, in other words. Verse 22, what? This shows the indication of the apostle, who is, of course, St. Paul. Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? This is directed towards the wealthy. Or despise, or despise you the church of God and shame them who have not. The very poor were shamed by the lack in the best of such plenty, of which they were offered little or nothing at all. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. He seems to ask himself, do these people realise what they are doing? Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Refers to the instructions that he's about to give concerning the Lord's Supper. That the Lord Jesus... The same night in which he was betrayed took bread, recalls the sacred occasion. Verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, which means the remarkable thing about this is the interpretation our Lord gives. This is my body which is broken for you is meant to symbolise the death of Christ on the cross. This do in remembrance of me. This pertains to the believer actually partaking of the sacrifice of, by faith. In brief, this is the meaning of the new covenant. Verse 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup, which is this of course, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. The new covenant would be ratified by the shedding of Jesus' own blood, which forever satisfied in sorry, which forever satisfied the sin debt. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, never forgetting what he had done for us, speaking of the cross, or the cross, or the cross. Where am I? Uh, verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, symbolic gestures you do show the lord's death till he comes this is meant to proclaim not only the atoning sacrifice necessary for our salvation but as well as an ongoing cause of our continued victory in life verse 27 wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the of the Lord unworthy tells us right tells us emphatically uh, right tells us emphatically that this can be done and is done constantly I'm afraid shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord in danger of judgment subject of judgment so right i'll stop there and i'll uh, analyze this in my own words what jimmy swaggart is basically saying here and it's true right is if you are taking the lord's supper if you have not repented of your sins so if you still live in sin in other words, if you're still dragging Christ's blood through the blood because of your filthy rags, because you're still living in sin and you haven't repented of that sin, you are not worthy to take the Eucharist. You are not worthy to eat his body or drink his blood. 
you are unworthy. But how many Christians out there still take the Eucharist, right? But still live in sin. See, being a Christian is more than just going to church on a Sunday. It's a completely way of life and a completely change of way of life. It's not just about going to church on a Sunday and then singing hymns and praying and then and and then reading the words and then throughout the rest of the week then you out you know getting drunk partying fauna Caton uh, and all the other sorts I can that we can all think of that is ungodly so what St Paul is saying here is he's also saying that if you are if you are still living in sin if you have not repented of that sin whatever sin that may be then you shouldn't be taking the eucharist because you are still being offensive to a God and Jesus Christ who went to that cross to die on that cross to spill his precious sinless blood on that cross for your sins. So that's verse 27. Right, verse 28, very similar to what I said in verse 27. But let a man examine himself. Yes, examine yourself in the faith. Are you living a godly Life. I'm not saying we get it perfect. No, because we are not perfect. Our strength comes from Christ. But that's still no excuse to not examine ourselves. Right? I mean, how do we treat people? What is our language like in public? You know, what kind of humour do we have? What kind of jokes do we tell people? Examine yourself in the faith. Hence, in verse 28, let a man examine himself. Which, is, which says here, examine his faith as to what is its real object. So, sorry, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup after careful examination. Verse 29, for he who eats and drinks unworthy unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself yes does not necessarily mean the loss of one's soul no but rather temporary penalties which can become much more serious you know how many christians out there are always ill always complaining of having colds for example i know one particular christian i'm not saying who or saying this person's agenda or saying this person's name but i know a christian out there who's always ill always complaining of having colds and as soon as this person gets over cold they got another cold why is this now i don't want to jump to conclusions i don't know if this person is repenting or not because i don't know what what goes in in the private life of this person but is it possible is it possible that the reason why this person is becoming so ill all the all the time is because they are taking the because he or she is taking the eucharist unworthily not repenting of their sin not turning away from their sin that's the possible, isn't it? And same for every other Christian out there, me included. I've been the same also, right? So if any of you want to point the finger at me and judge me, go ahead. Because I'm not sinless of this either. But there's only one judgment and there's only one person who can forgive me because that person died for me and that person is our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Right, where was I? Okay, so verse 29. For he who eats and drinks unworthily 
eats and drinks damnation to himself does not necessarily mean the loss of one's soul, but rather temporal penalties which can become much more serious, not discerning the Lord's body, not properly discerning the cross refers to a lack of understanding regarding the cross. All of this tells us that every single thing we have from the Lord comes to us excessively by means of the cross of Christ. If we do not understand that, we are not properly discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. For this cause, not properly discerning the Lord's body. Many, a considerable number, are weak and sickly among you, as I said a few moments earlier. The cause of much sickness among Christians, yes, and many sleep. They get tired all the time. There's a physical tired in us there. Even if Christians get plenty of sleep, they're still tired. They've still got no energy. Why? Because they've been punished for, not, for still living in sin. It can also be a demonic oppression. Because yes, if you're constantly living in sin, if you're constantly li living an ungodly life, God will allow a demon to come into your life and make you suffer unless you re repent. If any of you don't understand that, remember God is in control of all things. Satan cannot afflict suffering on you unless God allows it. Read Job. Read the book of Job. I can't stress this enough. Verse... Where am I? Um, uh, verse 30. I'll start again from verse 30. For this cause, not properly discerning the Lord's body, m many, a considerable number, are weak and sickly among you. The cause of much sickness among Christians and many sl sleep. Ah, now... Jimmy Swaggart says something different about this. This means that many Christians die prematurely. Now, that's a, now if that's not a warning right there, I don't know what is, right? They don't lose their souls. That is true. Once saved, always saved, right? But they do cut their life short. This shows us a seriously think how important properly understanding the cross is. Let that sink in, yeah? Bear that in mind. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should examine ourselves constantly as to whether our faith is properly placed in the cross of Christ. We should not be judged with sickness and even premature death. Verse 32. But when we are judged by the Lord because we refuse to judge ourselves, we are trusted of the Lord's divine discipline, that we should not be condemned with the world, which means you lose our soul, which you cannot. Verse 33. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for, an for another. This proclaims the idea that all m must share and share al alike. Verse 34. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. That's right. The Holy Communion, right, the Eucharist, is not a place to have a feast. It's not a place to stuff yourselves to be greedy. It's not a place of... of Glutton, not that you can actually fill yourself up on just one piece of bread or just one glass of wine any way, right? But that's not the point. The point is is to remember of what Christ did for us on the cross. But what does Jimmy Swagger do you have to say about this? The wealthy should prepare the sumptuous meals at home. But not in the context of the gathered assembly where some have nothing. That you come not together unto condemnation. 
This refers to this love feast turning into a detriment instead of a blessing. I would certainly think Paul's admonition would be heeded after the warning given. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Probably other instructions which needed to be given. Okay, and uh, that's the end of that reading. Whew. 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 Okay. Uh, so I hope that's an understanding of the Eucharist. Um, to all of my uh, brothers and sisters out there, please don't hesitate to like this video. Please don't hesitate to share this uh, video uh, to my brothers and sisters in Christ. If I do not get to see you in this lifetime, I shall see you all in their Father's kingdom. Amen. Now, I have repented of my sins, so I am a, so I am worthy to eat his body and to drink his blood. Eat this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ. And on the night of the Last Supper, he took the cup of wine and said, Take and drink. Drink this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ. <laughs>